Suigetsu no Hakobi is the most difficult move to use effectively as an Anji player. As an unorthodox, high-risk, high-reward tool, its usage tests the whole range of a player's fundamental skills. The burden this move places on us is both a blessing and a curse. Use it inappropriately, and we'll be punished heavily for it. But use it well, and it rewards us with high-value hard knockdowns, wall breaks, and even the round itself. Today, we'll look at the mechanics and frame data behind how Suigetsu no Hakabi works, what situations it's effective in, practical punishment on successful guard, and ways to maximize its success and minimize its risk. This is Millennium, and this is Suigetsu no Hakobi, Demystified. Let's begin with the move itself. After 9 frames of startup, Anji begins to spin, becoming invulnerable to strikes and projectiles starting on the 10th frame up to the 25th frame. This invulnerability period can be extended from 16 to 32 frames by holding down K. This is followed by 9 frames of recovery. Unusually, both the startup and the recovery are in a counter hit state, meaning we'll eat big punishes if the opponent successfully hits us in these windows. If at any point during the invulnerability, Anji is hit by a strike or a projectile, a canned guard animation will play for 38 frames where Anji is completely invulnerable. This animation cannot be cancelled out of with a purple roman cancel. It also has no recovery period, and Anji can perform actions immediately after it completes. As for the opponent, if a strike is guarded, they'll be stopped for 28 frames before their attacks remaining active and recovery animation play out. Unlike with Anji, opponents can purple roman cancel this animation. Nothing happens to the opponent if a projectile is guarded. Anji can also charge both Fujin and Ko, which essentially takes spin, startup, and invulnerability frames and adds it right in front of the special move's startup. A fully charged Fujin would have 9 frames of startup, 16 frames of invulnerability, and then another 15 frames of startup before the first frame of Fujin activates. Cancelling into Suigetsu no Hakobi hides its startup behind the block stun of the normal. This means its startup can never be interrupted, at the cost of changing how much effective invulnerability we get. We'll get into how this is useful later. The true frame advantage that Anji generates from a successful guard is equal to the sum of the remaining active frames and the recovery frames, minus 10. This means that the punishment Anji can dole out is dependent on both when in the animation a strike was guarded and how many recovery frames it has. This is a large part about what is unique about this auto guard. Not only do we need to understand frame data and spacing on block for normal defensive purposes, we're also asked to integrate active and recovery frame data into our knowledge base. This makes choosing a punish for a given successful guard perhaps the defining characteristic between good and optimal usage of Suigetsu no Hakobi. The biggest misconception is that Suigetsu no Hakobi is a defensive tool. This is an easy mistake to make, given that by itself, the move does no damage and has no hitbox. But its extremely sluggish startup makes it a generally terrible choice to use at times where you're expecting your opponent to take their turn. This makes it unfavorable to use in situations like on wake up, after getting hit by YRC, in between frame traps, or when we're at a frame disadvantage. And given its susceptibility to throws, it becomes less useful when the opponent relies more heavily on throws or has powerful command throws at their disposal. From a positional perspective, we should also avoid beginning a spin when we're already within throw range of the opponent. Its total of 34 frames of animation make it an easy target for reactionary throws. Finally, we should be careful about its usage in the neutral over simply walking and blocking. While it can be effective as a tool to dissuade poking or to close space and move through projectiles, a small mistake can turn into a game-ending one if our opponent can capitalize on spin's counter-hittable startup or recovery. Contrary to what it may seem on the surface, 
Suigetsu no Hakobi is not a move used to disrespect the opponent. It, along with Charged Fujin and Charged Ko, is instead a move to condition opponent's respect for us. Let's learn how this works. There's a very basic mix-up we can utilize, one that I've talked about in my Fujin video. Spin and Charged Fujin's startup is very difficult to differentiate against opponents that aren't trained to throw both of these options on reaction, or know to snipe the recovery of Spin or the start of Fujin itself, they can get blown up by blindly swinging into an auto guard, or fall victim to Anji's biggest counter hit possible. Having this happen just once or twice is enough for some players to simply turtle up upon seeing the spin animation start, opening up the door for throws. This setup is quite unnuanced, but it can be effective and win you some games. That being said, we'll need to learn how to approach using Suigetsu no Hakobi with a little bit more elegance. Setting up spin is really better described as a strategy rather than a mix-up. The overall goal is still largely the same, to either bait the opponent into swinging into it, or to scare them enough that they do nothing. However, because opponents are free to perform actions while we're still in our animation, the possibilities that they can do in response to this situation are endless. Instead of mashing, throwing, backdashing, or jumping immediately, any of these options can be delayed, which can drastically change how we need to answer it in response. The adaptations we need to make to execute the strategy do not neatly fit into a rock-paper-scissors format like more straightforward mix-ups do. Like most of Anji's strategies, it's full of holes, but being able to understand which flaws our opponents are trying to exploit and devastating them for attempting to do so is the essence of what this character does best. To start, it's generally best to use spin after a normal or a sequence of normals as something that is akin to a frame trap. Just be aware that after connecting with moves at tip range, the pushback will mean we need to spin for longer to reach the opponent. This gives opponents more time to react to the animation, and reacting to Suigetsu no Hakobi and throwing us before our spin completes is truly the best defense against this strategy. Let's go over the most basic set of responses, when opponents try to do something immediately after a block stun completes. As a reminder, the universal options are to mash, to throw, backdash, or jump. When mashing, most people will try to interrupt block strings with their fastest move, meaning moves in the 3 frame to 5 frame range, and so it's easy to claim that Suigetsu no Hakobi beats pressing buttons straight up. While that statement is largely correct, it ignores some important nuances. A 2p into spin can catch a Giovanna set to mash 5h, but a close slash into spin gets counter hit. Why? It's because different moves inflict different amounts of block stun. These amounts are dictated by a system mechanic known as attack levels. A 2p is a level 0 attack, meaning that it causes 9 frames of block stun. That means by the time the opponent exits block stun, we're already on our first frame of strike invulnerability, and we will continue to be for 16 frames. This means any strike between 1 frame and 16 frames mashed immediately out of block stun will be guarded. And so a smart opponent trying to target spin's recovery time can press a move that's 17 frames fast up to 25 frames and counter hit us. On the other hand, close S is a level 4 attack. This means it causes 18 frames of block stun. So by the time the opponent exits block stun, we've already used up 9 frames of our invulnerability and only have 7 left. So we can only guard strikes if it's between 1 frame and 7 frames. Anything 8 to 16 frames will counter hit us. The answer to opponents trying to target spin's recovery frames is pretty simple. Just spin longer, increasing the auto guard window. The higher the attack level of the normal we use, the more useful it will be to spin for longer than the minimum amount of time. That, however, makes it easier to get thrown on reaction. 
That's simply a risk we'll need to accept by attempting to hard call out the opponent trying to hit us out of our recovery frames. Next on the list is throws. The simplest answer is to not spin at all and then whip punish the throw, or use a frame trap to catch it instead. But remember that after some normals, minimum spin will not put us into throw range. We can take advantage of this to bait opponents who are good enough to only throw on reaction to the spin startup, causing them to whiff their throw instead. 2S, 2D, or 5H are prime candidates for this tactic. If you're confident your space awareness is better than your opponent's, you could even end spin just outside the opponent's throw range. Once the opponent is tired of their interruption options losing, they might try backdashing to avoid the supposed incoming throw instead. You can attempt to chase them down by spinning for longer, but this again is susceptible to throws. Optimal punishes for catching immediate backdashes is character specific, but Karin Nagiha is an extremely reliable way to do so. For something a little more optimal that looks like a spin, after any slash or heavy slash normal, a fully charged Fujin will clip a backdash for a full combo if the spacing is right. Finally, there's jumping. The lowest risk solution for jumping is to use a frame trap. Remember that jumps are typically 4 to 5 frames, so make sure your frame traps can catch that. But if we want to do something that looks like a spin, a charged Ko is appropriate here. Because the second hit guard crushes, either we get a great juggle combo if it hits, or at worst, we continue our turn with the JS into landing pressure, letting us start this quote-unquote mix-up from the beginning. Beyond this, we enter relatively unexplored territory, but by varying the amount of spin in Suigetsu no Hakobi and the charge amounts on Fujin and Ko, we can feel comfortable that if we look hard enough in Anji's toolkit, there's an answer to almost anything, and we'll have to learn it together. Before we get into punishment, there's a couple of other uses I want to talk about. I mentioned this briefly earlier in the video, but Suigetsu no Hakobi also has some uses in the neutral. It's a meterless way to prevent chip kills from projectiles. It can dissuade poking generally in the mid-range. It can also help against characters with high recovery advancing moves like Mei's Totsugeki and Giovanna's Trovao, which can be difficult to or impossible to punish on block normally. The extra distance charging Fujin grants can also be a useful way of getting in and Charged Kara Hop is quite an unusual movement option that can catch many opponents off guard. Extending the range of Kara Nagiha or Kara Phantos can also help in the neutral to clip movement. Charged Kara Nagiha benefits especially from this, turning into a low poke with huge range. There's also some argument for spin after Phantos. The 4 frames of advantage along with its pushback allow us to safely begin spin, guarding attacks that are 6 frames up to 21 frames. This potentially grants us larger punishes than usual and puts us into range for a throw. Finally, we can use it as a setup in the corner after a throw. By OTGing the opponent and forcing them into this tumble animation, we can generate ourselves a large amount of frame advantage, letting us safely set up a spin. Clage has a great video on the 2H OTG variant, which I'll link in the description, and you can expect one from me on this concept in depth soon. Finally, let's talk about punishment. It's important to remember that the moves we use to punish opponents are the same as in cases when we simply block punishable moves. It is when we can perform which punish that changes. Sepultura is normally minus 4 on block and pushes us away, meaning punishment is impossible. However, guarding its first frame gives us a true plus 12 right beside Giovanna, way more than enough to do a close S combo. Like in any punishment scenario, Anji has three priorities. Firstly, to kill the opponent. If we can do enough damage to win the round, we should. Second, is to get a wall break combo. Anji, like most other characters, becomes much more effective with a full bar of meter to use. And third, is to create a hard knockdown situation, so Anji can play his powerful Okizemi game through tactics like Shitsu or Fujin OTG setups. As this is neither a defensive punishment reference video nor a combo video, we'll only go over the three most useful punishment options. 
throws are the most basic punishment, only requiring two frames of advantage to perform. Granting a hard knockdown, this will be your default option anytime you're in range and you're unsure of what the frame advantage is. Close S2D Co is the next step up, requiring at minimum 7 frames of advantage. It does more damage than a throw and grants a hard knockdown. Depending on spacing, it could also convert into a wall break. Finally, at 22 frames, we have 2H Co, Close S, 2H Co. Only about half of the characters have any non-overdrive moves that can be punished this way. However, it's worth knowing given how big of a damage difference a 2H combo makes compared to a close S. Many 2Hs, 6Hs, and invincible reversals can be punished with Anjay's 2H. Of course, other combo routes using other starters have their own time and place, but even simply running up for a guaranteed throw can be highly effective. To guide you on becoming more optimal with your punishes, we can group some classes of moves together. 2Ps and 5Ps generally cannot be truly punished. Many opponents won't realize this and take the throw, but know that jumping and throw teching is normally possible here. 5Ks and 2Ks are generally punishable with throws. Any other moves, except for the ones you know for a fact can be punished with 2H, should be punished instead with a close S. There are a couple other important details to mention about punishment. The qualities of guarded moves are retained. This means that moves with counter hit recovery, like invincible reversals, will still retain that property after being guarded and crouching moves that are guarded will also allow for crouch-specific combos. This also extends to being airborne. Momentum and the airborne state will remain, making our default throw punishment less useful in these situations. We also need to be careful about guarding moves that have multiple hits, as these will continue after the hit stop animation completes. If we have meter to spare, we can buffer a Kacho Fugetsu to come out right as our invincibility frames complete. But if we don't, we should just be content with blocking. Don't be afraid to experiment here. You never know what punishes you might find. Suigetsu no Hakabi is not an easy move to summarize, because its uses aren't pigeonholed into one particular niche. It's a move that will grow with us as we individually become better players and as we grow as a community. As we become better at reading our opponents, at understanding frame data, and creating setups, Suigetsu no Hakabi will reward us more and more. Thank you again for tuning in, and until next time, this was Millennium.